Insta Immersion. Welcome, guys, to the next episode of I Am Talk. I have my very good friend Mario Quezada from Made by Maker. He's a branding specialist, creative specialist, design specialist, model extraordinaire, or whatever you want to call him. But hey, just <laughs> thank you for taking the time to come on the show and. Yeah, just looking forward to hearing what you got in store, man. Of course, man. And always happy to, to hang out with you and just throw some laughs down and having a good conversation. Absolutely. So I love to just kind of start with um, our first intersection, right? Okay. We have kind of a lot of different commonalities. Like we kind of grew up in the same area yep. in L.A. and actually went to the same art school too, right? Yeah. And so... Um, I remember going to your house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I think that was the first time that I met you. Yeah. And then uh, I think the most intriguing thing that I remember is how you were just showing me all these graphic design books. You just had this whole <laughs> shelf full of these amazing graphic design books. And um, so how did, how did that all get started in terms of just art, design, and just your love for everything and everything in... In the creative. design world? Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, I'll go way back. Uh, the one of the earliest memories I have of my mom asking me what I wanted to do when I grew up, I must have been maybe eleven, maybe ten, and I remember coloring in the in the kitchen. That same house. It was before we remodeled it, but uh, I remember coloring in the kitchen. And, and she's like, she's like, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" And I was like. And looked down. I was like, "Well, if I could color for the rest of my life, that would be that would be the thing. I would I would totally color, right? I I'd, I would just color for the rest of my life for a job." And she's like, "Oh, okay, that's interesting." And then uh, I went to a school called uh, Bosco Tech, which is an all all boys high school. And I, I went to a math was that Don Bosco? Don or? Bosco, yeah, I yeah. did a math competition there. <laughs> of course school. you did. Of and course I, you did. Yeah, <laughs> Chinese, right? <laughs> Um, so went there and, uh, in that, in that high school, we, we had majors and things like that. And, uh, I actually went through the graphics major and I went through a different major, uh, three other majors. Um, I actually got a D in my graphics major and I was, I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this. Cause this is like, it feel, it didn't really feel like graphics. It wasn't what I wanted to do. So I didn't actually do graphics in high school, which I, I, I kind of wish I did, but, uh, went through a manufacturing, uh, tech, uh, major and then uh, went into college thinking I was going to be an engineer. Yeah. Uh, my dad graduated in electrical engineering and he's a math teacher. Uh, and I was, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go, I'll go the, I'll go the engineering route and I'll, I'll become a lawyer. And I think my, my biggest, my biggest uh, influence for that was I wanted a Porsche at some point and I thought, <laughs> oh, lawyers drive Porsches. I'm going to do that. Um, and so I made it like, three quarters of the way through the first year at UCLA uh, engineering program. And I hated it, I hated life. I did not want to be there. Um, and uh, I didn't want to take another thing of physics. I didn't care about uh, calculus as much as, you know, my dad did. Um, and so my friend called me and his, his name is also Alex. He called me up and he's like, Hey man, I'm going to go, I'm going to be leaving to uh, Santa Monica or, uh, San Francisco. Right. And uh, I was like, oh, what for? He's like, I'm going to go art school up there. And I was like, there are schools of art? Like, you can actually go to an art school? And he's like, yeah, it's called Academy of Art, blah, blah. Um, he's like, I'd go to the art school down here, but it's like, I don't have a portfolio and I just want to do it. I just want to go to the program. And I was like, what's the school down here? And he's like, you know, Art Center, Pasadena. And I was like, oh, okay. So I started looking that up. And uh, these are the days where it's not internet, right? This is like, this is 1990. You got to request the This catalog. is 1993. I had to call him up. I had to call him up. Find the phone number, first of all, somewhere. I had to call him up and say, hey, can I get a catalog, a printed catalog sent to, to me? Uh, they mailed me one at UCLA. And I don't know if you remember being at Art Center, but like I opened the, the, I opened the, the envelope and the smell of the ink and the school just like kind of it was almost it was almost like spiritual just oh, kind of heavenly, went into my experience. went into my nose and i was like i'm i'm totally hooked like what <laughs> what is this smell it had like it was silver ink and like right, i was just right. like what is happening you know what you talk about um there's just something so uh i don't know what's the word right is ethereal word i don't even know what that word means but there's just something so reminiscent when you actually have traditional 
print yeah. in your hand looking at oh, something man. glossy smelling the ink. I literally have chills right now. I was like, which is weird, right? It's like, yeah, it's just printed it's, stuff. It's like, old school, but right? This but this like, like legit old right. school printed stuff. Um, and yeah, I, 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 as soon as I opened that thing up, I was hooked. And I called the school and I went to go visit. And I, I remember driving up the, the street above Rose Bowl and coming upon you, you come upon this building and it's literally just this black box across yeah. the, <laughs> across the mountains. And you're just like, you're like what's going what is on this here? place? It's like, a, it's like a Star Trek episode. So you walk in, it's that same, it's like smells like solvent and, and, and machine oil and like, and it's all creative, oh, it's all sweat. creative like, yeah, just like blood, sweat and tears of, of yesteryear creative stuff. Um, and uh, I was hooked, you know, I, I... And you're around, like, other creatives that from all, international, from it's everywhere, like People, right? like, that's what they're... They, they flew here to, to do this. And uh, it's, like, this mecca of creativity. And uh, I remember my, my dad was kind of, like, against me going to art school. But the first time he actually took me up there and saw the car design and saw all the stuff, he was, he was hooked. And mm. he was, was like, oh, there's, there's actually a future. These guys actually design, like, the future stuff. He's like, oh, my son can actually make a living. Now <laughs> I can, I'm good. Now I'm, I'm, good. All, I'm all right. He, he'll be fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, I went to Art Center. I actually quit halfway through because I got a job at Disney. Well, um, I'm actually at art school dropout too myself. There you go. So, there you go. So, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, ended up, I ended up going back and, and finishing, oh, okay, I but, but I, did, I, did, uh, I did drop out the, after like four semesters. Right, right. Went to work with my friends, some friends at Disney and uh, at Disney.com when you know, Disney.com was only like 500 people total. Uh, worked there for two years and then just kind of that catapulted me into my career. Um, eventually I went back to school, but that's a whole different story. But yeah, that's, that's how it started. Wow. Yeah. It was just kind of like happenstance and uh, it, uh, an engineering mm -hmm. diversion, but then found my way back. Sure. Um, fast forwarding the tape a little bit. I know you've had a lot of different agency experience working for a number of different um, companies in mm -hmm. LA in addition to ones in Hawaii too and what was agency life for you and how was that experience? Uh, man, agency life for me uh, because we were in the working in the internet in the early stages of the internet um, this is like I said this is 1990 at right. this point 1994 um, this is how old I am and this is how long I've been working in the internet um, I was around, I was working at Disney when they, when they developed the GIF animation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, the first time when GIFs were... Is it GIF or GIF? It, it, it's GIF because it's graphic. It ain't uh, peanut butter. <laughs> it's, not, it's not peanut butter. Um, so uh, we were around that. And then, then actually this, this new technology called JPEG came right, out. Right, and right. we're just like, whoa, this, this actually look, these actually look like photos still. You this is so crazy. You images to these sizes. This is crazy. So uh, that's how long I've been doing this. Um, Dope. My, my agency experience was, was kind of strange because um, I was in L.A. and I was doing nonstop entertainment work. Sure. Um, so everything was tight deadlines. Everything was, at that time, very high budgets. Um, uh, I, could, I could be a chameleon and learn different things. All of, and, you know, there's something to be said for that. But I could, I could learn different things and, and, and put them into practice because everything was just so new at that sure. time. Um, so agency, agency life was, was demanding. Uh, it was 60 to 80 hours a week. Um, but I was young and I was, I was doing something that I thought was really fun. Uh, and after and like, were you freelancing at the time too? Yeah. So like after I left Disney, um, I literally just freelanced for maybe a, a few years and then hopped around to smaller agencies, sure. uh, in-house agencies doing, doing like online gaming and doing uh, education space stuff um, and then doing uh, advertising stuff and then working, it was like para, para advertising agencies or para agencies working for Disney directly but, but in, a, in a different capacity. Um, so I, I moved around a lot but I learned so much because, because I was just able to able to take on all these different Absolutely. types of learning environments and stuff. Yeah. So, so I just really, really see um, those agency years as being formative years for Absolutely. you in terms of working with clients, working on different deadlines, um, being creative and, the, you yeah. know, more corporate atmospheres, bigger budgets and whatnot. Um, at what point did you say, okay, you know what, like, it's, it's just time to take a different turn from here. <laughs> uh, God did that. Um, so... 
couple things happened over my career. So I've, I've been around for three re recessions, right? So uh, when the dot-com busted, um, things went dark for a little while. 9-11, uh, that whole recession, the 2008 recession, uh, housing market bust. Yep. Uh, recently, this, this whole kind of crazy COVID situation. Um, so 2008, when the housing market kind of just busted, uh, I got released from the agency that I was working at at that point. Um, and we went from 26 people to, to a team of six. Oh my goodness. Uh, it was, it was gnarly. Um, and then at that point, my, my sister who you had already met and my brother, uh, had already been here right. and, uh, really felt God pulling me to Hawaii. Um, I wasn't sure what it was about, but uh, when I got released from the job, I was like, all right, I think it's time to move to Hawaii. I don't know why, what's there. I don't know why I'm going, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then early the next year, um, I came out here for the HIM conference, did some like, you know, some t-shirt sales for my brother with my brother and I, we were, we were doing some, some cool t-shirt stuff for uh, a quick minute, went on a Nepal missions trip and then right. never went back to LA. Wow. I'd never really officially moved here. I just kind of came for a visit and just stayed. Um, but really felt God uh, calling me here, and that was that was kind of the the big the big turning point in in my whole life actually. Yeah. Yeah. How was it going from the LA work environment now into Honolulu, where things are a little <laughs> different, right? <laughs> things are testify. things are a little different. Um, <laughs> small I king, couldn't small I couldn't get work for a whole year in in what I was doing, mm. and took that as a as a nod from God, saying, you know what, you need to just close the door on that for a while and that was the time where I dove fully into ministry right um, I started I started a young adult ministry at, at one love ministries um, back then and uh, dove fully full-time I was I was doing full-time ministry uh, not getting paid for it but I was still getting like my my uh, my unemployment checks and stuff like that so I, I was I was doing full-time ministry and then slowly but surely I started like branding churches and then I got into CrossFit and started branding all the CrossFits and started, you know, coming up with CrossFit brands. And so slowly but surely God started to send me things, but I only worked for one agency here and I'm not going to say what it was, but uh, <laughs> that literally lasted for uh, two months because when I got there, I was hired to kind of lead the team. Right. And when I got there, the team was so uh, downtrodden that they all quit oh my goodness. within like uh, four weeks of me getting there. Wow. And so I was like, okay, well, I don't need to be here anymore. But um, that was my only stint of being in-house out here. Right, right. So everything else has been freelance, uh, being involved in you know, blue startups downtown and getting contacts that way. But uh, yeah, I've, I've literally been solo for the most, right, most part right, as yeah. I've been here. Yeah. No, I've personally just been a fan of your design work and especially <laughs> your um, logos and and a lot of your print work a lot of the traditional stuff um, I love just really seeing your brand develop over time and so give me a um, glimpse of you know how did your your personal brand start and Ooh. how did you develop it to what it is today okay um, personal brand I honestly I didn't really think of my personal brand until mid 2019 so uh, pushing along and uh, we had we had just had our second child um, and I started I started really feeling a call to dive deeply into um, what is what is called brand strategy right knowing that I had all the I had all the pieces in my brain and in my experience to, to be really good at it but um, didn't really know what I needed to do to kind of like sure. be that thing um, so I just started getting on I, I pushed in and got online. I joined, I joined um, a professional group called The Future um, and went all in on a little bit more of self-realization and, and education for myself to, to go to this next phase. So I started putting on content online um, and it, it was this mix of branding, brand strategy and mindset, um, which is kind of what my brand is about. Um, and uh, you're like the brand of branding. It's the, it's, the, it's the branding of branding, exactly what it is. And so uh, I just I just kept pushing into that and and stayed consistent with that through uh, through 2019. Uh, I was setting setting 2020 up to be really really fruitful, um, and it was, but not in the way I thought it was going to be. Um, so 2020 actually made me pivot really hard, but in a really really solid way. I was able to help even more people than I was ever. Wow thinking of. Um, so 
um, that's 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 when I started realizing like okay I'm I'm my brand and so what I know finally is is going to be is is actually beneficial to everybody out there and I can help them and I can help them solve their problems right yeah. and you have this company now called made by maker or it's made X maker, made right? X maker I think but it's made by maker yeah right 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 where does that concept come from how how did you come out <clears throat> I, uh, I developed that years ago. Um, I was going to go. I was going to create a company with, with some friends and myself. But um, I wanted I wanted it to be a s subversive uh, uh, nod to to God and something that sounded cool and wasn't sure if uh, you know, but wasn't necessarily you know. Oh, Jesus Design Company one two three or you know. Uh, uh, God's design 101. I wanted it to be. Uh, I wanted it to sound a little different, and um, so uh, came up with made by Maker because we are all made inherently by our Maker, and um, anything that I make is uh, because He made me to make stuff. So there's 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 multiple layers to it, um, but uh, that's 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 basically the story. Yeah. I love how you tied your own personal branding with your core belief systems in Christ, right? And so, um, what is it like being able to express what it is that you believe through your work? Because I know for a lot of people, they're like, okay, here's my faith yeah. side, here's my work side, but to actually merge the two, it's such a, I mean, like there's a, um, a risk, right? There's At some point, um, I, I, was, I was very deeply discipled when I got to the islands by, by some pastors out here that that just kind of walked me through different things and kind of opened my, my mind to uh, releasing me from this, what you're talking about is a secular and a sacred kind of life that we think we have to lead one or the other, right? Right. Um, and really started reason, reading people like Tozer and uh, Spurgeon and all these guys that, that's like, no, your life is sacred and what you do may be secular or what the expression of that, expression of your work may be in the secular realm, but your life is secular is, is sacred and and everything that you do as a child of God is sacred so I love working with ultimately pub purposed companies or churches or or brands um, that hold true to that belief because it's so wonderfully um, it's almost easy to weave in every bit of them into God's purpose for their for their business or for their life um, and that's, that's just a passion of mine and God's actually gifted me somehow to, to be able to turn that light on in, in people and companies and kind of give them a little insight into how, um, how they can live that out. So awesome. Awesome. And Mario, for you to, um, be able to coach and guide one of your clients through success, right? Meaning that, Hey, like you've, um, been able to take somebody on, maybe they're at a certain point in their branding that's not up to par or thriving mm -hmm. or whatnot, or maybe it's just not hitting their vision or their goals. But for you, what does it mean to bring them to success in a place where, um, yeah, their brand is just um, a great testimony of what mm -hmm. it is that they stand for? Uh, success means that they are moving towards their ultimate purpose that God's given them. And sometimes their purpose for their company is very specific. Um, sometimes they're not really sure what their purpose is. So as I come in, I, my, my whole goal is to bring clarity. Hey, look, this is, this, is what, this is what I see your purpose as. This is what your company's purpose as. Let's, let's align that. But and often you kind of see it as two separate. Like sometimes it is. Sometimes, like you know, the 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 leader or the CEO or the owner is is they have this passion, but their right. company they developed for, for this thing. But so there there could be minor tweaks that we do to to kind of bring everything in alignment. Sure. Um, but that that success when the client walks away knowing who they are. Uh, branding is not about our colors and our, our our logos and stuff like that. That's just an extension. That's just a visual extension of of what our brand is. Right. Our brand is really who we are. I call it the heart and soul of, of what our company is or what our person is, if it's a personal brand. Um, and, and everything that we do is an extension of that. So if we, can, if we can align everything perfectly to where God wants us to go, then they come, they come away. And I've done this for, for secular companies. I've done this for you know, non-believing owners. And I've done this for uh, many believing owners. Sure. And the thing is, they, they come away with a complete clarity of, of where God wants them to go, 
or what their purpose is and how they're going to get there and how to talk to their customers. And so that's a win for me because then they'll know how to exactly execute what their brand is. Yeah, so yeah. when you see just their, um, their purpose in addition to their gifts and yeah. their abilities, when you kind of see all those things just locked together, exactly. what's, the, what's the fulfillment that you get personally when you're able to help guide and coach people to that place? It's kind of, uh, it's kind of like outer body. Uh, I'll say it like that. It, it sounds weird, but uh, the fulfillment that I get is that, is that I know that my purpose is being fulfilled in doing that. So that's my fulfillment. That's, God, is, God has gifted me to do that and bring clarity to people to help sure. them see, help them see themselves and help them see their purpose. So once they walk away and they say, I know who I am, I know what I got to do, I know, who, I know who I have to talk to, I know where I got to go, thank you. That is ultimate fulfillment for me. When they are super concise and clear about where they're going with their, with their person, with their brand. Mm. Sometimes, you know, I, 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 do, I do mindset coaching for individuals as well, and it's all the same. Sure. It's really about like just them walking away knowing that they have purpose, mm. they have value, and they have, they have something to offer. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, there's, nothing, there's nothing like that feeling. It's yeah. great. What's a, just a quick testimony of a, maybe a client that you've helped or, mm -hmm. or somebody that you've coached where you were able to just bring them to this place of, yeah, just trying to figure out, okay, what am I, what am I made for? Um, how do I serve people? What's my purpose to the point where, yeah, just all those different things start clicking and they just start running. Uh, man, there's so many. Um, but I'll, I'll speak of a secular client that I've had and, uh, it's, I won't, I won't go to the name and everything, but they're a, it's a fitness company. Um, and, uh, it's not this company, but it's a fitness company. And we, we've, we've, we've talked over the years, just kind of here and there. Um, and then I found out that they were, they were, they had a company about, you know, how to, uh, basically building programs, um, for, for individuals or for, for gyms, or whatever, um, on how to work out. And, um, it was just really cool, and I, I was like, "Let me just jump on the call with you because I, I want to give you some. I want to want to help you get some clarity." He's like, "I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I'm talking to. I think I know who I'm talking to, but I'm not sure even what our brand is." Like, and in 30 minutes, uh, just by asking him questions, the thing is, what what people don't know is all the answers are inside, right? So just by asking him questions, he was able to see what his brand is about, see what their true purpose is, and um, start to make start to make um, progress towards what they really want to do and to see a much larger picture right. uh, now they're now they're uh, ninety percent done with their app they have they have hedge fund managers calling them they have like people wanting to invest in their company um, I just got off the phone yesterday and he's just like he's just like if we didn't talk to you I'm not trying to shoot my own horn. It's just like, if we didn't talk to you in that moment at that time, uh, we wouldn't be here right now. And so just the fact that God's gifted me with ears to listen and, yeah. and, a, and a heart to speak, um, it's, been, it's been pretty amazing. Wow. So. Our time is quickly eluding us, right? I <laughs> yeah. mean, this is supposed to be a half hour segment, but I feel like whenever we talk story with anybody, just <laughs> time flies by because yeah. the, you know, just what we have to share is just so interesting. Um, if you can address this camera right in front and just do a little pitch in terms of, yeah, Made by Maker. Um, what are you all about? What is it that you want your um, potential clients to hear and how do they contact you sure. and so forth? Uh, my name's Mario Quesada. Uh, my company's called Made by Maker. That's madexmaker.com. Uh, what we do is uh, help people define who they are as a business, as a brand. Uh, we help them design their customers. We help them deploy their brand across every channel. And uh, we also do, I also do mindset coaching. Uh, so if you're struggling with uh, purpose in life and, and how, you're, how you have to, you know, how to move forward, basically how to, how to break through, um, I also do that too. It's, very, it's a very similar process. Um, and you can con connect with me on Instagram at the, T-H-E, Mario Quesada. That's M-A-R-I-O-Q-U-E-Z-A-D-A. -A. Um, at Instagram, that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, and uh, you can connect with me there or through my website, which is madexmaker.com.
That's so awesome, Mario. And then just the last few minutes, you know, I have sure. to ask this question because obviously, um, you know, you live small count. Yeah, you do a little bit of work, you know. Every once right? in a while. Every once in right a while. Here and there, what's your, what's your uh, bench right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bench right now. Uh, I can, I just, a couple weeks ago, I, I, I did like five singles of 315, which is, <laughs> which is like, which was like big for me. It was a lot for me. Which so is like three times my weight. Right? So you're looking like three Alex's, just like. <laughs> but for you, um, how does how does fitness? You know, you're obviously so disciplined mm -hmm. and uh, you're very consistent and committed. Um, how does that kind of go in line with um, you as a, as an entrepreneur? Fitness is um, a way for us to steward our bodies, right? It's it's a way for us to uh, keep. Uh, keep this gift that God's given us uh, in check. And I want to stay healthy. I've got young kids. I want to run after them for a long time. Um, so uh, fitness is a huge part of mental clarity, uh, energy, bringing energy, and just um, helping me to, to stay focused in, in everyday life. So I need to move every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So awesome. I'm, I'm in full belief of, of just um, knowing that in order for us to best serve people in the ways that we want to help them, mm -hmm. we have to be able to experience Absolutely. those victories and be able to be living examples of, hey, like, what is it that we want our clients to become? And so just seeing you being able to example that for them through your branding, through even physically and just your your mindset and, and how you coach people is awesome, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate and so, uh, yeah, we have two minutes left so <laughs> is there just any um encouragements or uh maybe it's for uh yeah potential customers or just people trying to just figure out identity and, and, and like what's their purpose uh, what are a few just last words you could kind of leave them with if you're if you're really looking for um uh your purpose in in life or in your in your company then really it's, it's very simple to kind of just step out. And what you need to do is take a look at all the things that are truly important to you. And it doesn't need to be something that you feel you have to accomplish, but this is a really quick exercise that you can do um, for yourself. I call it the retirement speech. So put yourself 30, 40 years in the future um, and write your retirement speech. Imagine that you are on a stage and you have to present your retirement speech and your retirement speech has to cover the last 40 years of your career, where you're at with where your company is currently at, how they're going to be moving forward without you, all the accomplishments, all the setbacks, all the hard things, yes. all the good things, um, and, and recount it and recall it in your life and write it as though you're actually going to do it. Um, it doesn't matter if you're not doing it right now. It, it could be, it could be huge ideas that, um, that you haven't even put in place mm -hmm. yet. But what you're going to discover from that, from that one simple exercise is that um, you want to do more with your company than you're currently doing. And most often than not, the purpose for your company is tied up somewhere in those extra things that you want to actually impact the world with. So um, it's really easy to, to, to do that. Uh, it's kind of a challenging exercise, but um, it's a good one. Right on. Well, this is all the time that we have left. Thank you, Mario, for Absolutely. being able to join us. So that's made by maker, M A D E X M A K E R dot com. And so you can contact Mario Quezada for coaching, for design work, branding work. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that I'm missing? If you need a workout partner, <laughs> I encourage you to If just you're on an island and you need a workout partner, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, guys. God all bless. Right, guys. Yeah. Instant I would love to thank you for hanging out with us here on I Am Talk. Hit the subscribe button to stay in tune with our channel. Oh, and don't forget to tap that bell icon to get notifications on the latest episodes coming your way. We're always looking for the next guests to talk story with here on I Am Talk. So if you just shoot me an email at alex at instantmersion.com, I'll be sure to shoot a guest application your way. Well, guys. It's all for now. Until our next episode of I Am Talk, this is Alex, and I'm out. Peace.